welcome to MicroStrategy's Mobile App Developer Academy. This course is entitled Transaction Services User Interfaces. Transaction Services is a built-in function within MicroStrategy that enables write-back capabilities to the data source. It allows users to update, insert, and delete records in the database at any time and from anywhere on their mobile device. Transaction services can be used for a wide variety of business operations, such as approving requests, submitting orders, capturing feedback, and forecasting sales. Today, we're going to look at the basics of building a transaction services mobile interface. We'll assume that you already have a transaction services report created. Transaction services user interfaces can be created by either using a grid or placing individual text fields on a panel stack. First, we'll look at interfaces with individual text fields on a panel stack. We are going to use a document with a single panel stack and a data set. To create a transaction service interface using text fields, they must be placed on a panel stack. First, create labels for each item we're writing back to the database. Simply add a text field and give it an appropriate label. After all your labels are added, add a second text field for each item. These will be used for the input control that the user interacts with. The important thing to remember at this point in the process is to give each entry text field a good descriptive name. If you don't, when you configure your transaction, it makes it difficult to differentiate between the fields and to link them to the appropriate column in the transaction services report. Once you have all your text fields placed in the panel stack, you can now configure the transaction by right-clicking on one of the text fields and then selecting Configure Transaction. Navigate to the folder where your transaction services report is located and select it. Next, a list of all the fields in the report will appear for you to link to the text fields you just added to the document. Again, this is where giving your text fields good names is important for identification. After you have linked all your text fields with the transaction input, you can then choose if you want the user to be able to input or modify the value on the screen. Since this is an add screen, we want all the items to be editable except the customer ID, since this will be automatically determined in the SQL statement that runs in the transaction services report. You'll notice that the control style is automatically populated for you based on the data type of the transaction input, such as text, number, date, etc. Now we're going to look at each control style that is available and when and how it should be used. First is the text field. This is used for input such as names or social security numbers where you want the user to enter their own value versus selecting from a predefined list. Like traditional input forms, you can require that a text field be filled out before submitting. You can set the maximum and minimum number of characters that the text field allows the user to input. If the value entered into the text field should be validated, such as a zip code or social security number, you can choose a validation from the list. This will ensure that the user entered the value in the correct format before submitting the screen. The last property for the text field is the ability to mask the text for values like passwords, where you don't want them to be readable on the screen. Next, we'll look at the list. The list option should be used when you want the user to choose from a predefined set of answers. There are two display types, pull down and radio list. Pull down hides the answer options until the user clicks on the field. The radio list shows all the values face up, either in a horizontal or a vertical list. You can choose the width of the list and also how that list is populated. Calculated is used for selecting from a range of numbers. If you have a minimum value of 0, a maximum value of 100, and an interval of 10, 11 choices will appear for the user to select from. Manual allows you to populate the list values yourself. The value is the numeric value which is written back to the database. 
the label is what appears to the user in the list. Using the input type of dataset will populate the list with values from a report that you have added to the document. This allows the list of values to be dynamically driven by the dataset. There is one report added to this document that can be selected. Next, choose the attribute from the report you want to use, along with the attribute form you want displayed to the user and the attribute form you want written back to the database. The calendar control is used for selecting a date and can also include time if selected. If you do not restrict the calendar to a minimum or maximum value, the list of dates available are infinite. Next, we'll look at the slider. The slider lets the user choose a numeric value by moving a point on a line left or right. If you, don't, if you do not have Show by Default selected, the slider appears as a text field until the user taps on it. When using a slider, make sure you have this checkbox selected. The value that is selected appears to the left of the slider, and the width available for this label can be modified. The numbers that appear in the range can be populated similar to the text field. They can be calculated by picking a minimum and maximum value with the interval between, or they can be manually populated. The stepper control is similar to the slider in that a user can make a numerical value larger or smaller but instead of sliding the control, they use the plus or minus buttons. The switch is an on-off value that is typically used for a yes-no type of answer, such as, in our example, whether they are a current user or not. You can enter the value for each off and on, typically 0 and 1, and if you want the control to appear as the standard iOS switch or as a single checkbox. The toggle displays images that the user can cycle through by tapping on the control. Each item in the list requires a numerical value and a reference to an image that will display on the screen. The unset value image source does not require an image, but if you do not use one, the control appears hidden to the user until it has been tapped at least once. The star rating is a control type that is used to select a numerical value out of a 3, 5, and 10 star scale. There are two visual display options available. The light grid scale also allows the user to select on a scale of 5, 7, and 10 and is typically used for surveys where the user is rating a series of questions. When configuring the transaction, you can define what the scale represents by providing a label for the lowest and highest rating. Both the star rating and Likert scale would typically be implemented in a grid design versus a single field on a panel stack. Later we'll look at how this is done. The text area is similar to the text field, however it provides space for larger amounts of text. If you have limited amount of screen real estate, you can select show icon when collapsed. This will condense the size of the text area and when the user taps on the text area, a large type area appears. When collapsed, you can choose if you want a preview by selecting the number of characters to appear. Now we're going to look at the advanced options that are configurable for the entire transaction. The first option, Flag Fields with Modified Data, puts an orange tag next to fields that have been modified since the screen was loaded. If Allow Submission Without Modification is checked, it allows the user to submit the data without having to modify any of the input controls. This is useful when there are default or pre-populated values. Once you have configured the transaction, the last step is adding the actions to the screen. You can add either an action button or action link from the selector options. There are three action types, submit, 
recalculate, and discard changes. Submit calls the transaction services report, which writes the data back to the data warehouse. Recalculate allows the user to recalculate the values of derived metrics and subtotals, reapply number and date formatting, and update other values calculated by the analytical engine. Discard changes removes any modifications to the form fields and sets them to the value when last submitted or blank for a new record. The requires confirmation checkbox will present a prompt to the user after initiating the action. You can determine which action is performed after the user submits his or her changes. To return to the document without performing any additional actions, select No Subsequent Action. To refresh the display of the document, select Refresh the Current Document. To run a specific report or document, select the Run New Report or Document option. You can pass prompts to the new document allowing for control over what data is displayed in the next document after the transaction is submitted. To run the report or document using data cached on the mobile device, clear the Force Live Execution box. The subsequent action will use mobile device cache instead of executing against the intelligence server. After a transaction is submitted, a default message alerts the user that the action is complete. If you want to display a custom message after the data is submitted, you can check Display Message After Submitting and Add a Custom Message. The action should be tied to the specific panel, stack, or grid. Select these in the target area. Since we only have one panel stack in our report and targets are automatically maintained by default, it is automatically selected for use. It's also best practice to give your buttons more descriptive names than the default submit, recalculate, and discard changes. This can be done by changing the display text under general properties. Use action words that describe the action similar to what you might see in the mobile marketplace. Now that we've seen all the options for creating a transaction services interface using individual text fields on a panel stack, let's look at how this would be done for a survey using a grid. In this example, we will be using the grid to update existing values in the database. After you've placed your grid on the document, just like before, right-click and select Configure Transaction. The only value that we'll be writing back to the database is the rating, which is on a scale of 1 to 5. The slider, star rating, and stepper are all appropriate control styles for this type of transaction. For this survey, we are color coding the scale based upon the user's answer. If you notice, nothing happened as we changed the rating. For this to happen, automatically recalculate values after data change needs to be selected. Now as we rate each skill, a color is being applied. The last option to learn about is mark rows for selection. This option will place a check mark next to each row of data, and only those rows that have been selected will be written back to the database. And that's a wrap for this MATA course on Transaction Services User Interfaces.